Chapter Eight of Pinocchio by Carlo Collodi. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter Eight: Geppetto makes Pinocchio new feet. No sooner had the puppet satisfied his hunger than he began to cry and to grumble because he wanted a pair of new feet. But Geppetto, to punish him for his naughtiness, allowed him to cry and to despair for half the day. He then said to him, Why should I make you new feet? To enable you, perhaps, to escape again from home? I promise you, said the puppet, sobbing, that for the future I will be good. All boys, replied Geppetto, when they are bent upon obtaining something, say the same thing. I promise you that I will go to school, and that I will study, and bring home a good report. All boys, when they are bent on obtaining something, repeat the same story. But I am not like other boys. I am better than all of them, and I always speak the truth. I promise you, Papa, that I will learn a trade, and that I will be the consolation and the staff of your old age." Geppetto's eyes filled with tears, and his heart was sad at seeing his poor Pinocchio in such a pitiable state. He did not say another word, but, taking his tools and two small pieces of well-seasoned wood, he set to work with great diligence. In less than an hour the feet were finished, two little feet, swift, well-knit, and nervous. They might have been modeled by an artist of genius. Geppetto then said to the puppet, Shut your eyes and go to sleep. And Pinocchio shut his eyes and pretended to be asleep. And while he pretended to sleep, Geppetto, with a little glue which he had melted in an eggshell, fastened his feet in their place, and it was so well done that not even a trace could be seen of where they were joined. No sooner had the puppet discovered that he had feet than he jumped down from the table on which he was lying, and began to spring and to cut a thousand capers about the room, as if he had gone mad with the greatness of his delight. "'To reward you for what you have done for me,' said Pinocchio to his father, "'I will go to school at once.' "'Good boy. But to go to school I shall want some clothes.' Geppetto, who was poor, and who had not so much as a penny in his pocket, then made him a little dress of flowered paper, a pair of shoes from the bark of a tree, and a cap of the crumb of bread. Pinocchio ran immediately to look at himself in a crock of water, and he was so pleased with its appearance that he said, strutting about like a peacock, "'I look quite like a gentleman.' "'Yes, indeed,' answered Geppetto, "'for bear in mind that it is not fine clothes that make the gentleman, but rather clean clothes.' "'By the by,' added the puppet, "'to go to school I am still in want. Indeed, I am without the best thing and the most important. And what is it? I have no spelling-book.' "'You are right. But what shall we do to get one?' It is quite easy. We have only to go to the booksellers and buy it. And the money? I have got none. Neither have I, answered the good old man very sadly. And Pinocchio, although he was a very merry boy, became sad also, because poverty, when it is real poverty, is understood by everybody, even by boys. "'Well, patience!' exclaimed Geppetto, all at once rising to his feet, and, putting on his old corduroy coat, all patched and darned, he ran out of the house. He returned shortly, holding in his hand a spelling-book for Pinocchio, but the old coat was gone. The poor man was in his shirt-sleeves, and out of doors it was snowing. "'And the coat, Papa? I have sold it. Why did you sell it?' because i found it too hot pinocchio understood this answer in an instant and unable to restrain the impulse of his good heart he sprang up and throwing his arms about geppetto's neck 
he began kissing him again and again. End of chapter 8